good day to you all my nice and decent people them how is everyone i hope everyone is great i hope everyone is doing fantastic so what is next for ryan garcia this is the question i'm asking what's next for ryan let's recap the other day not too long ago a few weeks ryan garcia won a fight that he was expected to lose against devin haney devin haney and ryan garcia have history they've been knowing each other since they were in their very young ages single figures first double figures 10 11 12 they fought six times as amateur the first time they fought they were 13 and the last time they fought they were 16 they had six fights and they were drawn tied 3-3 then fast forward to them becoming pros so firstly that it shows you that they have extensive history in boxing they are ones that have started early in their life now whoever starts something early in their life and continues it into their 20s they become very very good almost expert like at what they do they say it takes 10,000 hours to perfect said thing and they also say it takes 10 years at least at least to complete the 10,000 hours then again with these guys trading consistently day in day out they reach these 10,000 hours in less time than the 10 years so these two young men by the time they turn pro at the tender ages of 18 and 19 or whatever the age they turned pro they had already surpassed their 10,000 hours so their skill level between them was actually quite up now once turning pro they definitely both took different routes different avenues to get to where they both were when they fought each other Ryan Garcia saw that there was an avenue of getting popular through social media and he exploited it to its fullest doing all sorts of um, challenges where you wear a bodysuit which is supposed to work where trainers are training their fighters they wear this bodysuit that's very padded so that the fighter can punch to the body they don't always have to have to hold the pads down to the body they can hold the pads high and the, bo the pads can be for the head and then the bodysuit can be for body shots where the fighter can hit you as a trainer to the body and not hurt you he would carry around this bodysuit firstly he done it with his brother put the bodysuit on his brother and would be throwing left hooks at the bodysuit until his brother was like oh i can't take no more i can't take no more and he would post it on the internet tiktok twitter instagram he would be posting it posting it posting it then he would find other people that were willing to step up to the challenge and then he would bring celebrities celebrities started to get involved in it he started to like logan paul jake paul other influencers that were popular he would be putting the bodysuit on them they would come to see him he would go to see them put the bodysuit on them and hit the bodysuit until they say no i can't take no more and in turn this would grow his popularity on social media he would become the third most popular boxer on social media like instagram for instance third to canelo first aj second and then ryan and with devin haney now he took the more boxing traditional route of becoming popular or getting to that title let's say he started off young down in mexico and then having a whole heap of fights down there he decided that he's not going to sign with the promoter he i think it's been said that mayweather promotions floyd mayweather and his promotional company offered devin something that his father didn't see as appropriate so he said we're not going to do that and what we're going to do is we're going to create our own promotional company and we will partner with other promoters now this isn't done this is not something that's done floyd done it after he became super popular and then he had the clout to do it devin is, is doing it before he gets to that super popularity but it worked out for him because he ended up getting a deal done with eddie hearn and matchroom who at the time was trying to make big waves in america and saw this as an opportunity to do so to up their status in the american boxing scene because devin was refusing to sign with all these different promoters he refused to sign top rank he refused to sign 
um, PBC he refused to sign well, Floyd Mayweather for promotions which is under the PBC he refused to sign their offers because he sees he saw it as undervaluing him and Eddie took the opportunity to say we'll do this partnership thing with you we'll do it and he did do it and they got to have good fights big fights to then become in the place where they can then have a chance to get that world title that they were seeking by chasing down a fight called Vasily Lomachenko who eventually got elevated into this thing that's called a franchise champion by the WBC so when Devin Haney became mandatory for Lomachenko's belt the WBC Lom elevated Lomachenko to this franchise status therefore the actual world title went vacant and because Devin was number one in that governing body, the WBC, he got elevated to the WBC champion. Now, this is so sketchy. This is a part of the reason why I say boxing is getting on my nerves. Because all these different belts and all of these different trinkets, this, this franchise belt, I've not seen it again. It's gone. It's now just disappeared into thin air. The WBC brought it in to appease canelo alvarez in my opinion but that's a whole nother story i will get into the belts and stuff on another video let's co let's focus back to this ryan garcia devin haney situation devin gets elevated to champion luke campbell who lost to lomachenko was the wbc interim champion at the time and then he got beaten which then lomachenko and it's so crazy because lomachenko was actually a champion at the time as well lomachenko was the champion the wbc belt was vacant i think it was mikey garcia who had vacated the belt so it was now vacant what i personally think should have happened is devin should have fought luke campbell for the vacant belt and then the winner of that fight go on to fight a unification fight with lomachenko but the wbc didn't let that happen they allowed for a champion to fight for a vacant belt so a champion of a different governing body the wb Oh, is what Lomachenko had and the WBC was vacant so they shouldn't have allowed him to fight for a vacant title but they did because obviously it's popularity and this type of thing so they allowed him to fight for the vacant title and when he then beat Luke Campbell he got the title but straight away they petitioned for him to be elevated to franchise and he got that franchise elevation so that wbc actual championship was vacant which then devin haney got as the franchise champion you can do what you like you can circumvent your mandatory you can move up in weight you can move down in weight and fight the actual champion wbc champion at any other weight class there were so many different rules that the wcbc brought in about this franchise entitlement that basically devin didn't get to fight lomachenko but he now is the wbc champion through it being vacated or being vacant put it that way so ryan garcia had a eliminator fight with same luke campbell for the right to fight the wbc champion if luke campbell would have won that fight he definitely would have gone on to fight devin haney in my opinion but ryan garcia won the fight he got knocked down and he got up and he knocked out luke campbell and straight away he was asked okay so when are you gonna fight you're you ready to fight devin haney now and he said no nah, no nah, i don't want to fight devin i'm gonna fight this fight or that fight or that fight and then i'll come back and fight devin bear in mind he is now the mandatory he is now the number one mandatory for devin so personally at that time i'm thinking oh you're ducking you're not you're not confident in yourself to beat devin because to be fair he hadn't had the sufficient fights you know iron sharpens iron is what they say and he hadn't had the sufficient fights to sharpen up his tools these times devin has been fighting top contender top contender top contender after top contender to get himself in that position to get the belt that's how he got to the position to get the belt so anyway he decides that he's not going to have that fight with devin at that point this is january 2021 just after we come down that lockdown stuff anyway he ends up having different fights but you can see that he's got popularity he's getting a lot of views and stuff he ends up subsequently having a fight with Javante Tank Davis. Now, he had already gone up in weight to 140 pounds before he fought Javante Davis at 135. Now, Javante Davis said, I'm going to fight you at 135. I'm not fighting you at 140. Bearing in mind, he already had a fight at 140 and beat Mario Barrios for his interim title. But he said, I'm not fighting Ryan at 140. No, I'm not doing it. You have to come down to 135. And Ryan said, no, I'm not coming down to 135. I can't make that weight no more. It's going to have to be 137.5. And Ryan, um, Tank's gone, no. It's going to have to be at least 135.5. So, and then he said, yeah, and rehydration clones as well. So basically he drained, well, Ryan accepted the fight and drained himself down to the 135. Subsequently getting knocked out by Tank. Now, fast forward to fight to now, where he now accepts the fight 
with Devin. But he's saying Devin is now gone from that Lomachenko. He became undisputed at 135 and went up to 140, beat Regis Progre for his WBC title. And now he's a champion at 140. Ryan's up there and says, I'm, I'll fight you now. We're at 140 and I'll fight you. But he missed the weight. So the WBC said, all right, Carl, cool, you can't fight for the title. But Devin still said, oh, well, I'm going to beat him anyway. So let's carry on with the fight. They have the fight. He lose, Devin loses on points. Everyone's saying, oh, you know, Ryan has had the advantage because he was up. He would he didn't make the weight, so he was more hydrated. But then there's no excuses. He had the fight and he lost the fight. Ryan won. But a week later, we find out that Ryan Garcia has tested positive for a performance-enhancing drug named Osterine. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Now, the research that I've done says that this helps prevent muscle loss. So, Ryan Garcia seems to be too big for these weight classes that he's fighting in. Lightweight and super lightweight, 135 pound and 140 pound. So, you have to cut weight, right? You have to cut weight to get down to the weight to weigh in properly on the weight. When you lose weight, you also drop muscle, don't you? You're not just trying to build muscle, go gym. You're trying to lose weight. So, while he's losing weight he doesn't want the muscles to lose as well a fighter a person will take this drug to slow down the loss of muscle while you're cutting weight now there was another drug that was said to be found in his system which later they said they didn't find it um, or the, the second test didn't have it but the first test did have it something like that this one is called I'll pronounce it 19 dash norandrosterone now this is another performance enhancing drug that helps build muscle helps build testosterone they said that that one's not in there as well but it, it makes sense with the two drugs combined where a fighter that's apprehensive about losing his muscle mass while cutting weight would take these two particular drugs now when you are a fighter and you have been found or you have taken drug tests and they found find these synthetic drugs now you've got to understand these drugs can't be produced in say a whole heap of eggs or a different type of meats that might produce certain different drugs this is a drug that is synthetic it's man-made and it has to be inserted into your system this is what is called a qualifiable drug there are two when they're testing for these peds they can say that this particular drug drug sorry is quantifiable meaning if it has less than a certain amount inside your system it can be said that this doesn't really make an effect but then there's also drugs that are qualifiable this means it doesn't matter how much of it is in your system it can be a pictogram it could be that little as long as it's there it's qualified and that is illegal now these two particular drugs are qualifiable not quantifiable with that being said we're going to take away 19 dash norandrosterone take that away because they're saying that that's not in there even though they saw it in the first test they didn't find it in subsequent tests afterwards one thing that has stuck is the osterine so ryan is protesting his innocence um I came on here to address this <laughs> that I cheated. Lies. Yeah. Everybody knows that I don't cheat. Um, mm -mm. What can I say? You know, uh, why didn't they come out with this before? You know, the fight. If they found it before, why would they let me step into the ring? No, nah, I never took no drug. Now, there's no, there's never been a boxer that says, you know what, I took the drug, and uh, yeah, you found it, and I've been caught. Yeah, well, yeah, that's how it goes. There's never, it's never happened no boxer ever admits it so i'm waiting to see we are waiting to see if it sticks and if it does stick we're expecting for his fight with devin haney to be called a non-contest therefore it would be stricken of devin's record he is still the wbc champion because the fight wasn't a title fight because ryan missed weight in the first place but now the fight itself may be stricken off the records so that devin haney's record can now be flawless again this is a non-contest if it turns out that way but what i want to know is what's next for ryan will there be a ban 
will they have to obviously look about what's going on do the investigations the necessary due diligence and then issue a ban if they do if they do issue the ban he'll be gone for however long what weight class will he come back at will he come back at a 140 super lightweight or will he come back as a welterweight 147 or will he even come back at all this is the questions i'm asking the fact is you do, this is the thing what i'm really looking at apparently he got 50 million dollars Devin haney got 35 million if he's found guilty that money is not getting taken away from him he's still gonna have that money so it may help him to just say do you know what? i don't need to do boxing no more i don't need to fight i could do something else he's very young and he's very wealthy at the moment so this can help this can help to build a proper generational wealth portfolio i am keeping a close eye on it what is next for ryan garcia this is my ultimate question what will happen give me a comment help me to figure out this puzzle what do you guys think is going to happen to ryan garcia what do you guys think should happen to ryan garcia it, do you guys think he's guilty tank is helping his case by protesting his innocence now tank's got a, a, a dog in the fight because at the end of the day him beating ryan and then ryan beating devin makes it look like ah oh, he doesn't have to fight devin devin's rubbish because i'll fight i beat ryan and ryan beat devin i don't like triangle theories get in the ring and make it happen let's see actually who who is who because i can tell you a lot of different scenarios where that triangle theory did not fight three different fighters fought three different victories and yeah so that triangle theory doesn't work for me do you think he's innocent do you think he's guilty what do you think should happen to ryan garcia let's talk about it in the comment sections guy beautiful let's another video let's go big up the people them big up everybody tell a friend to tell a friend about the channel sign up yourself sign up your brethren them notify yourself notify your brethren them and let's make this pop bless up